Hello, this is Pavel from DevOps Codes Academy. Today, we're gonna create an account on github.com website, which allows us to store remotely Git repositories. Also, we're gonna create a first public repository. Let's jump into the browser. Okay, guys, we are in the browser. Let's go to the github.com page where we're gonna create for you the first GitHub account if you don't have it yet. So let's click on sign up. And I want to show you the whole path that we can go through. We're gonna use Academy DevOps codes, of course, provide your email, create a password. Enter username. Okay, no underscores. Good. All right, so we can create a new repository here. We can collaborate on existing repository. So I would like to show you today. Uh, we can start with the initial repository. You see here an owner. So this is your user and we can have repository name. So let's make it like initial. Description is optional. We will leave it as a public. We can add a example of readme file we can add a git ignore if there's anything for terraform for example all right no license and let's create the repository so this is your first repo you can start playing with it and let's try to clone it so if we go here code we can use https copy it we can clone it. But first, before we do that, we have to go to the VS code and also we have to have installed Git on our machine. So let me show you first how to install Git. That will be the page with the information, how to use it. If you're using Windows, please proceed here. If you're on MacBook, you can proceed here. And if you're on Linux, you can also use it. Okay, hopefully you went through the installation of the kit. If you are stuck somewhere, please put a comment, try to reach me out and I will help you, of course. Another tool that we will need is a VS Code. Visual Studio Code is an IDE which will allow us to inter interact with the code in very much more human friendly way than using just a simple terminal like here, right? You remember that LS, the Academy, Terraform, right? So we had to check the files by cut use nano to edit anything and of course we can do this sometimes it's needed when we are uh, connecting to the machine but it's much easier and more nicer when we use visual studio code so please install vs code for you depending on your platform and we're gonna see in vs code right after that all right so we are now in the terminal i hope that you have uh, working git already right let's make a new folder academy go into academy and now we can git clone and i have it already in my history okay uh, at this point i had to make some cuts so i'm just showing you right now how we can uh, clone the repository in a second way also at the same time uh, authorizing with github i have done it on different profile because i had some problems with my current user so as you can see there's uh, another option to download the repository and interact with it from this point please continue with uh, 
the lesson. LS, you see that's the name of the repository. So you can have multiple repositories in one folder. And every time when you clone on one, it will create a folder with the name of the repo. Let's go into the academy and you can see that now we are on the branch, the branch main. This is the branch. And branch allows us to make our changes without interacting with other people. So we can have multiple branches, but we will go about it a little bit more into details in future. Just for now, let's configure it a little bit. So uh, we can make git config username and you can put your name. My name is Pavel Farczyk. So we can set it up and we can also make git config user email. And here, that's my private email from the company, but let's use it Academy DevOps Codes. All right. So as you can see, we have only a readme file right now and git ignore and dot git. So the folder dot git stores all the history of the repository. And we can open a folder here, right? So let's open it. Academy. So it will be easier for us. Uh, we have a new window. That's okay. And we have a quite nice view on our repo. We can open a new terminal here. We are by default now in our repository. So we can do a simple change right now. Read me. We can make welcome to the Academy of DevOps Codes. We can save the file and you can see that there's letter M. Means that Git recognized that this file has been modified. I can copy this just to show you. And easily we can also see the change. So when we go to the lens, and we click on the file, we see that that's the change. We have added something. We can revert that change. We can discard. So you will see that now it's no more here. But if we paste it again, and if we remove that line, so now you will see in the red color, something was removed, something was added. That's a very useful thing when we are working with uh, Git. Let's revert it once again and just have it welcome. Okay. So we can commit our changes and now we can do it both ways. We can use the terminal and we can also use the VS code here. So Git status shows us the same what we can see here, right? that changes that are not staged for commit. And if you want to up, add our changes to next commit, we need to add these files with the command git add and the name of the file or git add dot will add all of the files. The same we can do here, right? This will make a git add stage changes or stage all changes. So we can make it both. Let's say git add dot and you will see that here now have stage changes and we can unstage it. If we go git status, you see now from the red, it's now green here. And if we make a commit, let's say, let's call it, we will save the state of our repository. This change will be added if we make here unstage git status you see it's red again all right so let's add it here and we can put a message we should put a message when we are committing it's a good practice when we describe what was done during our commit during our time between the previous commit and this commit now we can 
put here at welcome message and we can commit it from here and we can also use if we make it status once again now we are red and we can make git commit m at welcome message right this is the same we can do it here and we can do it in the vs code so let's do it first in terminal just in case if you are not working with vs code and sometimes we might have to use only terminal that's why i always start with terminal here and vs code is something that will help you in the future and we see that we have uh, one change that we can sync. We can push one commit to our origin to the main branch. I had some issue because of uh, my current user in VS Code and Git. So I switched to another one. And after downloading VS Code here, installing Git and installing the extensions for Git, have pull request and interacting and authorizing here. I was able to make a change that we did before and I made a git push. So if we go to the repository and we refresh here, we can see that two minutes ago the message has been updated and we pushed our changes on the main branch to the repository. Thank you, that was all for today's lesson. Next lesson we will continue learning about git we will interact with our Terraform code, we will import it to the GitHub and continue our journey about AWS and infrastructure in the cloud and DevOps culture. Hope you enjoyed that. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and like the video. Have a good day.